Hey everyone, in this video we will learn how we can generate the graphs of the sine and cosine functions from a knowledge of the unit circle. In this unit circle I can freely rotate the terminal arm about the origin to create different angles in standard position. Now recall that the cosine of this angle, this angle here, um, corresponds to the x-coordinate of the point where the terminal arm intersects the circle, and the sine of this angle corresponds to the y-coordinate of the same point. So what would the graph of y equals sine x look like? What I want to do here is to create a graph of the sine of each angle versus the angle. So if you were to think about a table that we might use for this graph, in the first column we would have different angles, say uh, from 0 all the way to 2 pi. And in the second column we would have their corresponding uh, sine ratios, or in other words y coordinates. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what this might look like using the unit circle. So when I have uh, an initial angle of zero radians, my sine of zero, look at the y coordinate, is zero. Okay, so that's where our graph would start. It would start with zero, zero. Zero radians, sine zero equals zero. Okay, so let me animate this for a few seconds here. Okay, let me pause right there and let you know what's going on here. So what's happened here is I've started to rotate my terminal arm around the unit circle. And so the angle in standard position is increasing. And as this angle increases, so is my sine ratio. Remember, it started at 0, and it's been climbing from 0 all the way to 0 0.459. Right? In fact, if you think of the sine ratio as the height of this right triangle, you know that the sine ratio is just going to keep climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing until it reaches an all-time high of 1. So let's see that happen. Okay, and there it is. So it just climbs and climbs and climbs until it reaches an all-time high of 1. And now, if you were to predict what the sine ratio, what's going to happen to the sine ratio, you can see, well, A, it's going to come down. And not only is it going to come down until it hits 0, but once it hits 0, it's going to go into the negatives and keep diminishing. All right, so let's take a look at that happening, right? So sine ratio is decreasing, right? Because the, the sine of the angle is decreasing. Okay, until we hit pretty much an all-time low of negative 1. From there, we've only got a quarter turn of the circle left, but it's a more optimistic one, shall we say, because what's happening is we will anticipate that the sine ratio will climb out of the negatives back to 0, right? So it's at an all-time low of negative 1 right now, and it's going to just keep climbing and climbing and climbing, just as our pink graph is climbing and climbing and climbing until it reaches 0 again. Okay, so now if I were to... Uh, allow this to continue to graph until let's say 4 pi. Let's just see what happens there. Okay, so as I'm rotating around again, it seems like I've heard this story before. I'm just moving around. My sine ratio increases until pi over 2 and then decreases. And this idea just repeats over and over again. Okay, so I'll, I'll pause it right there before it hits 4 pi because it resets. Right, and so just by looking at the y coordinates as we uh, rotate around the unit circle, uh, we can see how the graph of y equals sine x is generated. Okay, next let's take a look at the graph of y equals cosine x. And for this, I'll go back to this tighter window from 0 to 2 pi. Now, this time, what we're going to focus on for cosine is the x coordinate. So if we're graphing y equals cosine x using the unit circle, we're basically taking a whole bunch of angles, let's say from 0 to 2 pi, and then considering what the corresponding cosine would be, and then plotting those coordinates. Right? So plotting angle, comma, cosine ratio. All right, so what I have here is the beginning. At 0, our cosine of 0 this time is 1, and so our graph starts at a maximum of 1. Okay, remember sine x started at 0, 0, cos x starts at 0, 1. The 0 meaning the radian measure, the angle measure in radians, and the y coordinate in this case referring to the cosine. Okay, don't get those confused, right? This is actually the, the y coordinate of the graph of cosine x, but of course if you're on the unit circle you know that you're looking for the x coordinate if you want the cosine. Okay, let's let this run for a little bit. Okay, let's pause right there. So what has happened is we've swept through an angle, uh, or all of the angles, in the first quadrant. 
And so unlike sine, where when we do that, the sine just keeps increasing and increasing, we started at a maximum of one for cosine. So the only way to go is down, right? So as we move this way, and, and I'll show you again, that this pink dot helps you, right? The pink dot is at the one position right now, and the pink dot is moving towards zero. So obviously cosine is decreasing. It's getting smaller and smaller. Now it's 0.17 and it started at one. And then when it hits pi over two, it reaches zero. And then as we continue into the second quadrant, you can see that that pink dot continues to move over. The pink dot really refers to what's happening to cosine. So you can look at the pink dot or you can look at what's happening to the X coordinate of the orange, uh, the orange point. Okay, so it gets more and more negative and it looks like it's going to get even more negative before we're done with this as we move towards negative pi. So I'll just let that run to, sorry, not negative pi, but pi. And so this is the beginning of our graph. We started at one. And as we move to pi over two, we just decrease, decrease until we hit zero. And then as we move to pi, we continued to uh, get more and more uh, negative until we hit an all time low of negative one. And now we start climbing out of the negatives, right? So negative 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The pink dot is rushing over to the positive side. And right there is about where we finish. And so again, we reach a maximum of one. Okay, and if I let this run until we hit, say, about 4 pi, you can see that the cycle repeats. So again, watch the x-coordinate. The x-coordinate is getting low, low, low until it hits 0. Then it's getting more and more negative Okay, as it, uh, as it comes to an all-time low of negative 1. And then after that, it starts climbing out of the negatives, reaches 0 again, goes into the positives, and proceeds towards that maximum of 1. So that's how we use the unit circle to come up with a graph of cosine x. Now to wrap up this video, what I'd like to do is to show the graphs of sine x and cosine x uh, next to each other. So there's sine x, and I will remove the circle. Whoops. Okay, so I wanted to, you to see the two of them. And notice their similarities and their differences. In some sense, we can call these graphs siblings because they sort of share the same DNA, if you will, right? They're, they have a lot in common if you consider their maximum points and their minimum points, um, but they are also different. And so uh, pay careful attention to some of their properties that they have in common and that also sets them apart.